good evening. This is Maestro Cartello with the Dawn of War 2 Retribution Elite Mod Cast. Today we have a 2v2 on Calderas Refinery. First we have my me as this orc war boss, a huge orc, a very tanky melee hero, can disrupt melee blobs, and is very, very angry. His teammate is Lindonin, a very good Eldar player, playing as the Eldar Warlock. Also a very good commander. Offensive, can either be upgraded with lots of offensive spells, or can to be a tanky melee hero. On the other team, we have Warp, as this teleporting orc mech boy, a harassment and teleporting commander. Mostly fights ranged, uh, has a lot of functionality with his different weapon upgrades, and just this little guy, much smaller than the war boss, has a screw in his mouth and a funny hat. On the other side, we have Wurgle, another very good Eldar player, right up against uh, as a Lindonins. Confusing my Eldar players, so many Eldar Warlock players. Uh, these dueling Warlocks right now, although Lindonins kind of running away, and kind of with good reason, because he's definitely going to lose this fight. Anyway, up here, we have, let's see, looks like my me is pushing up with his, with his War Boss. War Boss kind of leading the charge. Uh, double shooters focusing on that mech a lot, and then the the war boss definitely really charging in here a lot, running very fast, very fast for such a big orc. Uh, but warp is kind of handling this so that he is not letting his sluggers to really just stay in melee with the war boss. He's actually splitting his sluggers apart, actually baits out the the big stomp. And the stomp from the Miami's war boss hits nothing. And now the war boss is in a lot of trouble, caught between two slugger squads, and is derping his. I mean, it's not Miami derping his war boss. Kind of derped on this pipe. Uh, kind of just stopped when he was on that pipe, and then he just got wiped by those slugger boys. It's kind of a little sad to see that war boss just like kind of trip over the pipe or whatever. Uh, so an early hero loss from Miami. Not entirely. I mean, I don't know. Not entirely his fault. I'm trying to say because he got stuck for some reason over there. Um, certainly, he did overextend his war boss a little too little, running into the range blob. A lot of good micro from warp to minimize the the impact of the war boss in that engagement. Baited out that stomp so that the stomp didn't do much and mostly only stomped the, the shooter boys. So slug warp does have a double slugger build. Uh, it's less common than a double shooter build, but it will be good if he decides to go for a vehicle heavy play, if he really wants to go for Death Dreads or Looted Tanks in Tier 2 or Tier 3. Mimey, on the other hand, has more of a ranged heavy build, more traditional, doubles, double shooters, getting upgraded to big shooters, as well as this Looter Squad, which is much better in the Elite mod now that it does more damage. Wurgle is in the middle here. Wurgle went for Triple Dire Avengers. This is a heavy ranged build. Uh, it does a lot of DPS. I think it's actually definitely one of the best ways you can get a lot of DPS out in Tier 1 for any race, and especially for Eldar. A lot of ranged DPS, at least, uh, since those Dire Avengers are cheaper than, um, than it's a Tax or Chaos Space Marines, but they do about as much damage as those units. Uh, right now, these... These Dire Avengers in a lot of trouble, though. Get a grenade off on that Luda squad, but definitely took some losses on the approach right there. They will get out of there just fine. We now have Howling Banshees from Lindon in, going for the aspect of strength. And I think it's been interesting to notice that um, players who I feel like haven't been playing Elite Mod that much are going for the aspect of strength on their Banshees, while players who play Elite Mod more seem to be going for the aspect of fleetness. And I don't really have scientific evidence to back this up, but this is just my uh, my impression of things. And I feel like part of this is the players who haven't been playing Elite Mod as much, at least as far as I know, I have not seen a Linden in play Elite Mod that much. Um, they might just be going kind of with what they know. Uh, whereas players who play Elite Mod more might know the aspect of fleetness is a pretty good upgrade. Ludo Boy Squad probably going to set up here and suppress this entire blob, but these Storm Boys can decide to jump on the Ludo Squad if they so desire, which they do right now. So, jump unit, orcs, Storm Boys are a jump unit for the orcs, will allow them to hard counter setup teams and ranged units. And we're definitely going to have a little bit of a gen bash over here with. Three melee units uh, attacking, but he actually decides to run his melee units away. 
I guess maybe he sees these, these Howling Banshees coming. Uh, jumps his, his Storm Boys right into Howling Banshees, but he may have actually been jumping to get out of there. Did not want to retreat uh, with the Howling Banshees in his retreat path. And even Slugger Boy is just a full retreat. Probably sees uh, sees that Guardian Weapon Team set up right there. Would have suppressed both of those Slugger Squads. And then they would have been in a very dangerous meat grinder with uh, Howling Banshees. Wow, a nice grenade wipe. Takes out four Slugger Boys. This lone Slugger Boy gets out of there with 24 health. Very close call for Warp. Warp getting a double Storm Boys. You don't see that very often. Uh, most Orc players would say, probably say something like, "Oh, you can't get double Storm Boys. That's going to bleed you way too much," and it it might it might bleed Warp a lot. We'll see how it works out. If it works out, maybe it'll turn out to be a bad purchase. Maybe not. Uh, it's certainly going to be a high DPS purchase uh, with both of those Storm Boy squads doing 150 DPS power melee for a combined 300, and both of them being jump units that can easily counter range units and setup teams. Uh, and that was uh, definitely a winning engagement, a massively winning engagement for the blue team. Wurgle actually commenting on how good the channeling runes are. He says that they are ducking good. He might be substituting the D in there for a less appropriate word. A little bit of a gen bash from my me. Getting that power node will probably get this power generate as well. Oh, but now with these double storm boys about to jump in, that's going to be so dangerous. Warboss should stomp. I think he actually has, yes, he has been upgraded to Cyborg Implants, giving him the big stomp ability, and now continuously disrupting those Storm Boys by using Now I'm Angry as well. So good disruption from my me to control those Storm Boys, but ultimately I think, hmm, he actually, those Storm Boys do get out of there, and those Storm Boys do take some bleed, lose two models. Wurgle also gets one of his Dire Avenger squads out there with only one model. Uh, and so far, it's been the blue team exerting a bit of, definitely exerting more control lately after kind of a slow start uh, with Mimi losing his hero, Linden in going for a fairly light tier one. They still don't even have some of these points up here capped in their favor, uh, but they are winning all these fights in the middle. And another charge from Mimi, I think kind of after realizing how he was getting kited in that original engagement where he lost his war boss, he wanted to invest in his war boss in a way that would kind of make him effective in the way that he wants him to be effective. Because he was kind of using the war boss in a way that was not working at the time. Uh, this charge will make him a lot better at charging into range units. They will not be able to kite as effectively because they, the war boss will just outrun them with his charge. Ooh! This Slugger Boy squad with one model left just barely gets out of there. So a very close call from Miami to not lose that one Slugger Boy squad against these two Sluggers. This ranged heavy build. Already have double knobs up for these Storm Boys. Those Storm Boy knobs do about 65 DPS heavy melee. Uh, their damage type has been changed from power melee to heavy melee. And I'm assuming the damage stat is the same. But either way, that knob is going to make them so tough and so powerful. They also stun upon landing. Uh, Luda Squad hidden right here behind the energy shield. But we have a Wraith Lord right here that, for the most part, as far as I can tell, is currently uncountered. And this Luda Boy squad just kind of sitting here, I think. All right, it eventually does reveal itself so that it can start suppressing these units, but it needs to retreat out of there right now or Miami will lose it. And they're derping. Miami's units keep derping, and he's going to lose that Luda Boy squad. So it's kind of really sad. Uh, Miami taking some losses that I feel like are not entirely his fault. Oh, and a warp throw with two grenades. Going to take out quite a few models. Uh, Warlock even jump. Wow, I know. A wipe from that Shooter Boy squad. So the grenades combined with that big ass sword hit from the Wraith Lord. So the Wraith Lord does about 85 DPS heavy melee, but then the DPS thing is kind of weird because um, sometimes you get high DPS out of something that attacks very frequently, and sometimes you get high DPS out of something that does a huge amount of damage in one hit but attacks very slowly. The Wraith Lord is something that does a huge amount of damage in one hit but attacks very slowly. And that was an extremely short life for, th for that Death Dread by my me. Miami now down to two units, taking quite a few losses. Lost that Shooter Boy squad, and then the Death Dread also lost the Luda. So, wow, three losses. So, Miami in a little bit of trouble, and now the whole red team is over here, getting that Power Bash. This Falcon way overextended. Oh, excuse me. 
Oh, and this Falcon, if Linderman does not continue to micro, it will be dead. And it's backing up into a corner. The Falcon has nowhere to go. And ultimately, it, there's no way it can get out of there alive. Lots of losses going on down here. Falcon, one more hit right there. Should go down. I do want to catch that going down. Wow, still alive. And tons of losses still over here. And maybe even a bit of force melee from the warps. No, not force melee. Because these are Linderman's warp fighters. They do get that Haywire Grenade. They do get that Haywire Grenade on the Wraith Lord, uh, but Wurgle does disrupt those Howling Banshees with his Dire Avengers. And such crazy fights going on right here. So that Wraith Lord gets so close to dying, uh, but ultimately doesn't. And huge losses for the blue team. It's gonna be tough for them to come back. Miami even kind of said something like, I'm F. Short for, obviously, an expletive. Uh, losing pretty much his entire army, including his war boss. Only kept this shooter boy squad. Now has a weird boy. Uh, he's kind of staying in the game, but certainly took major losses. So, Wurgle. Both play uh, Wurgle can go to Tier 3. Warp is already starting to go to Tier 3. For my me, it probably would not be a good idea to go to Tier 3 for a very long time. You should probably focus on rebuilding a decent army that can fight, basically. Huge losses. So, you know, Miami is... I'd say Miami is kind of a mid-level player, and I try not to mean that as a bad thing. For all I know, he could still be better than me. Um, I've certainly played games with him, and I like the guy, so I certainly don't want to talk bad of him, but I think... In this, in this particular game, I think he might kind of be the weak link. Uh, Lindunin is a very good player. Wurglicious or Wurgle is also a very good player. Warp, I'm not quite as familiar with, but I think he's also a pretty good player. So, Mimey is kind of stepping it up here. And I, I certainly admire that too, since, I, I mean, I've done that sometimes. Sometimes you just have to play with some really good people. And there are always going to be times, like, no matter what game you're playing, even when you're playing with really good people, or even not so good people, there's always going to be a range of skill levels, players who are better than others. And although Miami is, I'd say, a mid-level player, I'd certainly say he's good enough where he can, he can try to play with uh, players on this level and kind of step it up a bit and even improve. A zap goes down and a warp throw, but the warp throw, the warp throw does result in a grenade that takes out two models. I feel like this engagement, it looks like it's going to favor the red team, especially with those, well, actually, some good use of the weird boy, uh, disrupting those dire avengers and taking out a lot of those models. That weird boy taking a lot of damage right now, does use a warp vomit, but I think he need, yeah, he does need to retreat out of there. Uh, Wraith Lord upgraded to the Wraith Bone. Uh, ability. I feel like you don't see that a lot, but basically it allows the Wraith Lord to heal by himself without any support. Dire uh, Banshee's in here chasing Dire Avengers. Maybe gonna wipe this squad. I think they will. Maybe was Swift Movement activated, so one Dire Avenger squad goes down for a Wurgle. That's a good, a good victory for Lindonin and the blue team in general for uh, Wurgle to, or for Wurgle to lose one of his squads. And these Dire Avengers just kind of running around, but we do have knobs out now all ready for warp. Uh, the red team, with that tech advantage they have, well into tier 3, while both players on the blue team do not have, are basically they are in tier 2. And those Howling Banshees in so much trouble. Uh, Mimi, wow, good play by Mimi. Uh, Mimi actually put, Mimi put um, Ard Boys on the Howling Banshees. I think that is actually, that could probably saved the Howling Banshees. I think they would have gotten wiped otherwise, so some good team play from Miami to throw Ard Boys on the Howling Banshees, allowing them to retreat through like a million units. Still down to one model, but that at least saves the squad for Lindonen, and Lindonen's Howling Banshees are at level three. So I think that was, that was a beautiful play um, by Miami. <laughs> and Wurgle is saying, wait a sec, I have throw. And I think he's talking about the warp throw ability, which we've only seen, we've seen like once or twice. Wow, big stuff going on down here. Uh, warp vomit on this entire melee blob from the orcs. Uh, Mimi's war boss in trouble again. I think needs to get out of there. Will definitely get wiped. Another hero wipe uh, for Mimi. Certainly struggling a bit. Weird boy just barely gets out of there. Uh, double War Spiders doing a ton of damage to those Orcs, though, as as well as those Eldar. I mean, those 
Those Worth Fighters are killing it, literally. Um, and Blue Team miraculously staying in this game with map control, with Lindonin doing a lot of work here. And gets Dark Reapers, probably mainly as a knob counter. Dark Reapers do amazing damage versus heavy infantry. Do something, Indrid recently posted the stats on my channel. It's, it's something like roughly uh, 16 damage, 16 plasma damage per model. Uh, and then with the 1.5 bonus damage for plasma damage, they're going to be doing a ton of damage to those knobs. Uh, Wraith Lord up here uh, has that Wraith Horn ability so it can heal by itself. Also has uh, an L a sh shoulder mounted Shuriken Cannon, giving it some pretty good range DPS. As well as it being a tough melee walker that does a lot of damage in a single hit. So, very close game, despite some so many huge losses from Mimi uh, early on. Uh, Mimi is actually managing to go to tier three, and Warp is actually complaining about pop cap. He cannot buy any more units. He just has too many. Uh, he does have enough red to throw rocks, though, so I'm hoping to see that. Especially, we all do have all these blobs up forces, especially after a Warp Spider Squad teleports away and their teleport is on cooldown. Uh, that being said, Warp probably does not have sight on these. Probably does not have sight on these Warp Spiders over here. So certainly, uh, a, a good time to use a nuke. It would be right after Warp Spiders both use their teleport. After two Warp Spiders blob teleport use it on where they teleported to, because you know they won't teleport out. Uh, wow, a huge disruption on the Eldar army uh, from Bama Boys on the Storm Boy squad, and an Eldritch Storm right there. Oh, that's going to be terrible. And that Eldritch Storm, incredibly powerful. Wow. Now, huge losses for both players. I think we had Tank Busters go down for Mimi. A Bright Lance team went down for Lindonen. And I, he maybe I don't know if he used that in combination with Warp Drive. Missed that. I certainly saw the Eldritch Storm. Very good Eldritch Storm. Uh, Eldritch Storm is very powerful. People certainly complain about the fact that the uh, Eldritch Bolts appear to be random, which I don't actually know if that's true, and maybe it is true. But it's still, man, it's still uh, just very powerful. As long as those bolts actually do hit, they can do so much damage. We saw quite a few squads go down right there. We saw at least two, uh, unless I missed something. Another bomb of boys goes down right there, disrupting that, disrupting some more orc units, allowing this huge melee blob from orc to just walk right in and force a retreat just because it's threatening way too much. And wow, a single Howling Banshee right here. Chasing down uh, these dire avengers. Oh, this howling banshee is retreating, and I don't think it will make it out alive. That—that's the howling banshee squad that Mimi had saved with Ard Boys. Now it's gonna have to retreat through. Oh, is it gonna miss? Oh, just kind of catches it by the side. Unfortunately, I don't think that was a great play by Wurgle. If he had just used the regular attack from both the Avatar and the Wraith Lord, that would have been a dead howling banshee squad. But instead, he went for the Wailing Doom. Uh, on the avatar to take it out, which was ultimately not a great choice because the Banshee was only caught like kind of on the periphery of that Wailing Doom. Looked even looked like it was gonna get out of there. So that was a Banshee squad that could have died. As it is, Lindemann's keeping that level three Banshee squad alive, and it's probably gonna go to get to level four soon. Um, though blue team being pushed back a lot now, though. Mimi now with that battle wagon it does sh shoot those. Slugger boys a bit, so the battle wagon. I don't fully understand how the battle wagon works, to be honest, since um, I don't play orcs a whole lot. And when I do play orcs, I usually just go for like the more traditional play of getting knobs. Um, but it seems to me that the the weapons on the battle wagon seem to do uh, pretty good damage to most infantry types, as well as being good against uh, like super heavy heavy infantry and vehicle armor. I'm guessing maybe it does something like plasma cannon damage or even melted damage. And this Wraith Lord is now overextended and is going to die, I think, even with the, possibly even with that Wraith Bone active. Oh, maybe not. These tank busters are definitely getting hit by that avatar. Weird Boy taking some shots, but he himself has to be really careful. Should actually be shooting at the Wraith Lord instead of going for the warp vomit. 
needs to just take one more shot, and I think that will be the end of the Wraith Lord. What is the what is the weird boy doing? All right. In any case, the uh, Wraith Lord does go down. Seer Council out for Wurgle, a elite tier three melee unit for Eldar. Now available to all commanders instead of just the Farseer uh, in the elite mod. Although they cost a bit more to get them at base than with the Farseer Global. And these Seer Council, not terribly tanky. Certainly nowhere near as tanky as Knobs or Terminators. Uh, I mean, they are an Eldar unit, so they're not going to be as tanky. Certainly more health than Banshees. Uh, and they do extremely good damage. It's something like 40 DPS per model on a 5 model squad. It comes out to about 200, if my math is correct. And we have a very strange Wailing Doom hitting ultimately nothing. Maybe he was trying to do some read. He might have thought that the uh, Warp Spiders would teleport in, but hits nothing with that Wailing, wailing Doom. And this Avatar in a little bit of trouble, certainly losing a lot of health, but I think it will get out of there. Oh, and I think Swift Movement Global uh, from Lindonen to move all of his units in right there. Probably going to take out Wurgle's, Wurgle's Warlock, I think. Yeah, definitely. And now this, I think the Stormboy squad might actually be in trouble. A big shot from the Battle Wagon, gonna go up right there. Wow, nice big shot. The knobs do kind of dodge it, but most of the other units got hit right there. And something right here, Mega Rumbla. Oh, <laughs> but the Mech Boy does just straight up die. And 23, 20 or so victory points for the blue team. Blue team just barely hanging in there. Warlock trying to get that cap on the middle victory point, but in a lot of trouble against these Seer Council, against these other Warlocks. So the Seer Council are like kind of a group of five Warlocks, but they're taking a ton of damage from the Double War Spiders. Seer Council are gonna die. Wow. So Seer Council only have regular infantry armor. <laughs> Wurgle says, wait, what? He didn't understand why his Seer Council just died. But the Seer Council only have regular infantry armor. So they will be taking full damage from these Warp Spiders. Those Warp Spiders, individually, they do 100 DPS piercing with the Exarch. And, I mean, if you have two of them, that's 200 DPS. That's a very, that's a ton of damage. Oro says, I, I was pretty much on my desk. I don't know what on my desk means. I don't know if that means he's got his head on his desk, kind of face palming himself about what just happened, or if he was, like, not paying attention or something. Warp just says, your dude's died. So, this is now uh, a game that the blue team can stand to win. Uh, these Shooter Boys right here trying to get the decap on this victory point. Triple cap for blue now. And ultimately, those Shooter Boys get out of there. Uh, getting hit by the Weird Boy. Getting hit by War Vomit. Not being able to do anything. Banshee's now level 4. Had two extremely close calls, but have survived to go get to level 4. It would be extremely tough. Uh, the War Boss in here. Wow, big shot. Oh, man. We had a Wailing Doom that I thought was going to catch those two Warp Spiders, but the Warp Spiders teleported out of there. Now, oh, he's got to be careful of that that other ability, which I don't even remember what it's called. Probably, I think it's called Wrath of Cain. And the War Boss right here actually tanking against those knobs, but I think he's used both of the abilities right now and does need to be careful uh, since the knob does not want to get war the War Boss does not get away. And this Storm Boy squad, I think, is going to go down, and Wurgle is not going to be happy about that. Or Warp is not going to be happy about that. And now this game is going significantly in flavor of... In flavor. I always say that. In favor of Mimey and Linden. <laughs> so after that not-so-great start from Mimey, he is back in this game. Knob Squad out. Tank Busters. Warp Battle Wagon. Kind of freed up all that... Freed up his pop cap from those early unit losses to now have a big army of Tier 2 and Tier 3 units. Knobs almost fully upgraded. Now getting their huge hammers. Uh, and warp gates. Uh, webway gates. We haven't been seeing a lot of those. I feel like that's actually one of the great assets that Eldar has. That we haven't seen much of in this game. And they're even saying that at one point all Miami had was a weird boy. But he built it back up. Um, and Linden and kind of kind of carried him for that time when Mimey had nothing. Uh, but now at least Mimey's back in the game. He's got a big army. Wurgle does have this Fire Prism, which is a great unit. It's especially 
it can be hard to... It's a micro-intensive unit, uh, and it's especially not going to be good at all with Warp Spiders right in here. Two Warp Spider Squads that can just jump in, throw down hi Haywires, and I think that's going to be a dead Fire Prism, which is kind of sad considering how good uh, the Fire Prism can be. Oh, but a second Fire Prism to save it! Oh, but it still dies. So that Fire Prism is a really good unit overall, especially good for uh, late game victory point denial. And I think we had something going down over here. But that Fire Prism is going to be great for late game victory point denial, which is kind of exactly what the red team needs. But I don't know if they have enough units overall to fight back. And this Knob Squad in a lot of trouble. Swift movement activated, I think, from the Banshees. But I think the Knobs just have too much health. And a sink kill from this level 4 Howling Banshee Squad, this veteran Howling Banshee Squad that almost died twice. Uh, but now at level 4, doing ridiculous damage with those melee multipliers. And let's see, Warp says, GG Warp Spider. So Linjin and Dud have that, did have that double Warp Spider build. They are, they are, Warp Spiders are a very good unit overall, doing crazy range damage as well as having the Haywire Grenade ability, which is very good. And this looks like it's a game in favor of Mimey and Linden and this War Boss in a little bit of trouble, but I think at this point, the blue team has done well enough that even if the War Boss dies at this point, it's not gonna matter that much. Uh, but we do have an attempted back half from Warp, but he just doesn't have enough units, and now he's facing down knobs, and now we have a Rocks, I think just for fun from Warp, he had the red. Uh, he wanted to use it, and that was probably going to be his last chance. Hopefully, he doesn't hit much, though. And that is the end of that game. Hope you enjoyed it.